In this video, we're going to look at how to use learning algorithms, like reinforcement learning, to get a policy to run on hardware. But here's the twist. We're not going to actually talk about the specifics of algorithms. Instead, I want to talk about something that doesn't get much attention, and that is to compare the different approaches that you can take to get a good policy that can actually run on and control your hardware. And I know that doesn't sound terribly exciting, but as you'll see, it's important because the approach you take can make a big difference in terms of hardware safety and the time it takes to learn. And so understanding that will help you decide what is best for your project. So I hope you stick around for it. I'm Brian, and welcome to a MATLAB Tech Talk. We're going to use reinforcement learning in this video to get a rotary pendulum to balance. And I'm using the Quanzer Cube Servo 2 for this demo, which is being controlled by a policy that is running on a Raspberry Pi. The Pi is also connected to my PC, which is running MATLAB and Simulink. And throughout this video, I'm going to show you how these three pieces of hardware are going to work together and how they're used differently depending on the approach that we take to train the policy. Now, if you're new to reinforcement learning, we have a multi-part MATLAB Tech Talk series that covers the basics, and I've linked to that below. But for this video, all that you really need to know is that reinforcement learning uses data from the environment in the form of observations and rewards to learn an optimal policy. And a policy is an algorithm that takes in observations and then determines which actions the agent should take to maximize the reward. So if you are familiar with control systems, you can think of the policy as the controller. All right, so this is the general problem, right? We need environment data to train a policy that will ultimately control our hardware. So how do we get there? Well, let's start a flow chart to figure out the different ways that we can approach this. Now, our goal is to run a validated policy on hardware. This is where we want to end up. And we know we need data to get there. So at the beginning, our first question might be, do we already have existing data that we can learn from? A nice thing about reinforcement learning is that you can use it to learn a policy offline. And this means that the agent uses observations that have been previously collected by another source. For example, data can come from hardware that's currently being operated by humans or another type of controller. And training from data can be useful to bootstrap a policy. Or another way of putting it, to efficiently learn a policy that you can then use as a starting point to build on with the online methods that we're going to cover for the rest of this video. Now, I'm not going to go into more detail on offline RL, but I've linked to an example where you can learn more if you are interested. All right, so now regardless of whether or not you started from existing data, typically with reinforcement learning, you're going to want to interact with the environment to further train the agent. And so the next question is, where do you get additional data from? Right? That is, how do you want to interact with the environment? And we have two main ways that we can do this. We can train with data that is collected by the hardware in the real environment, or we can train with data that's generated in a simulation of the environment. So let's go with the first approach for now and train the policy directly on the hardware. For the pendulum, this means that the agent will start with some random policy. Again, we're not bootstrapping from existing data. And then run that policy on the hardware to see how well it does in the form of generating rewards. Then the policy will be updated as it learns from the result. And we do the same thing again in the next iteration. And we continue until the policy is no longer random, but optimized. Now, to accomplish this, we're going to have two questions that we need to answer. And one is, where does this policy run? That is, on what hardware does inference happen? And then two, where is the learning done? You know, which hardware does this algorithm run on? Remember, in our setup, we have two different processors. We have the Raspberry Pi and we have the PC. And in many hardware applications, you might have something similar, right? You might have a relatively low power and low performing computer that might be embedded in the hardware itself which is the Raspberry Pi for us. And then you might have a more powerful computer that's located near the hardware or in the cloud. And that's the PC in this example. So we have these two different computers. And the question is, how do we leverage them for running reinforcement learning? Now, one approach we can take is to train the policy and run the policy completely on the embedded processor. 
That's directly on our Raspberry Pi. And this makes the learning process self-contained since the hardware doesn't have to talk to a remote processor in any way. And this is nice because it minimizes communication latency, which is almost always a good thing in real-time applications. And it minimizes the impact of communication outages since your hardware is not actually talking with anything else. But the problem with this approach is that even though running a policy might be quick and easy, training the policy can be computationally intensive and your small embedded processor might not be up for the task, right? So another option is to, well, we can just train and run the policy on the remote computer. I can use my PC to do all that heavy lifting or even a workstation or a server on the cloud, which can speed up that learning considerably. But in this case, the policy is also running on this remote computer, which means that the hardware is collecting the observations from the environment and then sending that data to the remote computer to run the policy. And then the actions from the policy are sent back to the embedded processor to execute. And this setup has the exact opposite problem of the previous in that it is susceptible to latency and communication outages. So there's a third option where the computationally intensive training is done on the remote computer. The updated policy is then sent to the embedded processor where it runs locally, sort of, you know, the best of both worlds, which makes it an attractive option for training on hardware. And this is how my hardware is set up where I'm running the policy on the Raspberry Pi, and then I'm training that policy on my PC in MATLAB. Now, after training, you validate that the policy meets the requirements for the system. And if it does, well, then you can just run that validated policy on the hardware, which was our goal in the first place. But if not, we have to change something about how we're training. And if we're staying with training on the hardware, then we might change how the learning algorithm explores the state space. Or we might have to change the reward function, or we may change the hyperparameters of the learning algorithm. And then after we make those changes, we train again. And we do this loop until the policy is good enough. So let's run reinforcement learning using this setup and see how it goes. By the way, I'm following this MATLAB example that's available to run if you have a Raspberry Pi and a Quanzer Cube and I'll link to it below. And I'll also link to another example that still uses a Raspberry Pi to run the policy, but it controls a simulated environment if you want to try this out running it on hardware. But the basic overview here is that we have this Simulink model that will generate embedded code from and then deploy it onto the Raspberry Pi. So this code runs the controller or the policy and it sends commands and receives measurements back from the cube hardware. So while this code here is running on the Pi, the hardware is generating data from its experiences, which then gets saved to a local file system. And then periodically those files are sent to MATLAB, which is running on my PC. And then MATLAB uses them for learning to update the policy parameters, which finally are then sent back to the Raspberry Pi. And this whole process runs until the training goals are met or we stop it manually. Now, the last thing to note here is that I'm making sure that the do training variable is set to true because otherwise we'll just be running the existing policy as is without improving it. So let's run this and see how it goes. All right, right off the bat here, we can see some interesting results. It doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot, right? And that's because we're starting from a completely random policy. We didn't bootstrap it from existing data or anything like that. We just stuck a random policy on the hardware and said, go. So for these first episodes, it's effectively just sending random commands to the hardware while it's probing and exploring the entire state space. And we can see up here on the monitor that experiences do show up in the folder on the Raspberry Pi. And then they disappear as they're moved over to the PC for training. And then the training progress bar shows that our average reward at the beginning here is actually quite bad, right? It's negative for all seven episodes that we've run so far. And training on hardware like this can be a slow process as the hardware has to eventually explore the entire state space enough so that the policy can learn to maximize reward. 
All right, I let this run for several hours and it got to almost 1500 episodes. And it certainly requires some more training because you can see that the average reward in red here is still improving and the cumulative reward in black has a lot of variance. And we can actually see that if I run the current learned policy, it does, well, it does an okay job of balancing the pendulum, right? There's certainly room for improvement since, you know, there's a lot of wobble in the pendulum still, but at least it does successfully swing it upright and balance it. Now, while this is a straightforward approach, training on hardware is challenging. For one, it possibly took a toll on the hardware itself. Remember all those random commands that were causing terrible motor jittering and the occasional banging of the pendulum into the power cord? Plus, with a physical setup like this, it can be hard to cover all of the different operating states the hardware will encounter in the wild, since we have to physically train the hardware in those situations. So training on hardware is time consuming, possibly dangerous, and in the end, difficult to cover the entire operating space. So if we go back to our flow chart, we have another option, and that is to use a simulated environment. With a model, we can train a policy virtually. And the benefit is that we can train it faster if you know the model can run faster than real time. Plus, there's no hardware safety to think about. And it's much easier to place a model in different initial conditions and different environment states. All really good stuff, which is why the simulation approach is often where people start when they want to train using reinforcement learning. But the downside is, that you do need a model of your environment, and preferably an accurate model. And there's many ways to model a system, and we've covered them in another MATLAB Tech Talk that I'll link to below. But the general idea is that you can develop a model using data with a process called system identification, right? So we can use existing data of the environment to learn a model. Or if you understand the physics of your system, then you can build a model using first principles. Or you can do a bit of both, where you use first principles to understand the structure of the model and then use data to do parameter estimation. Now, for this video, I'm using an existing model of the Kwanzer Cube Servo 2, which again, I'll link to below. But however you choose to develop your model, once you have one, you can now train your policy in a simulation. And then, just like we did with hardware, we validate the trained policy. But this time, it's against the model of the environment. And if we don't like how the policy is converging, then we have the same options of changing the learning algorithm in some way and trying again. But if the policy is good enough, then we go and we validate it on the hardware. Because again, hardware is where we ultimately want to run this policy. It doesn't do us any good if the policy works great in simulation and then like garbage on the hardware itself. So let's give this a try. Here, I'm learning the policy against the simulated environment. And you can see here that just like with the hardware, you know, the first episodes are producing really low rewards as the random policy is being run and just slowly optimized. And then eventually, you know, the policy starts to produce higher rewards over time. Now, I let this run for almost 1200 episodes and you can see that the reward has jumped up to over 800 and you know has mostly settled out as the policy learned to control this system. And if I run this trained policy, you can see how nicely it controls the pendulum. It's pretty much rock steady, right? So I'm happy with this result in simulation, but the question is, how does it work on the real hardware? To do this, we go back to the MATLAB script and this time change the do training variable to false. And then down below the training section that now gets skipped, I want to load in a policy that was trained in simulation. And so now let's go run this and see how it does. It's, it's kind of doing a pretty good job, right? I mean, it's balancing the pendulum nicely. And we don't have any of those terrible sounds that we got when we started from a completely random policy. You know, it's not jittering all over the place and the power cable's not being hit. So overall, you know, it's pretty good. Now, if we do look closely at the pendulum, you can sort of see a small amount of jittering, which we didn't see in the simulation. And that difference is because, well, you know, models aren't perfect representations of the real world. There's a gap between what you expect from simulation and what you see in the real world, a so-called sim to real gap. Now, this gap isn't necessarily a problem. 
In fact, a lot of time it isn't a problem, which is why model-based design with plant modeling and closed-loop simulation is so popular, because models can represent reality well enough to be useful. Now, sure, there's a difference here between what my model predicted and what's happening on the real hardware. However, if this behavior is good enough, you know, if it meets the requirements of the system, then we're done, right? We can just simply run this policy on the hardware. But what if it's not good enough? Well, now we need to find a way to improve this policy further. So let's go back to the flowchart. One way that we can do that is to try to reduce the sim to real gap by improving the model. You know, we could add more dynamics and have it better represent reality, or we can even do something called domain randomization where we adjust the initial conditions and the model parameters and the scenarios it's running to widen the range that the model covers and then allow the policy to become more robust to those changes. And then we go back through our training cycle in the simulation again. But we do have another way to improve the policy. And that is by starting with the trained policy from simulation, but then taking this route and fine tuning it on the hardware. And this is similar to training only on the hardware, but now you're starting from that better policy, one that won't take as long to converge on a solution, and hopefully one that doesn't put as much stress on the hardware during training. So for this last example, I'm doing just that. If we go back to MATLAB, I need to change the script slightly. Here, after we initialize a random policy, I'm gonna overwrite that policy with the one that I trained in simulation and then I'll change the do training variable back to true. This will now start from the trained policy, but it's gonna continue learning while it runs on the hardware. And while we watch this go, I wanna leave you with this. There's no one best way to learn a policy from hardware. It depends on how well you can model the environment, how hard it is to reset the hardware between episodes, how safe you need to keep the hardware and the people and the things around it, and many other things. And there are different approaches that you can take depending on your needs. But this approach that I'm taking here where I've started training on a simulation and then fine tune on the hardware while the policy runs on an embedded processor and the learning takes place on a remote computer is actually an approach that's ideal for many situations. Plus this type of workflow is also used for continuous learning. Continuous learning can be especially useful when the environment or the hardware slowly changes, like as components wear out or external conditions shift in some way, because the policy can continue to learn and stay optimal without requiring a full retraining cycle. And if you want to try this out yourself, I'll once again recommend that you check out the resources in the links below. But this is where I'm going to end this video. If you enjoyed this explanation, you can find all of the Tech Talk videos across many different topics, nicely organized at mathworks.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.